Hi everyone, Big Mac here. Uh, this is actually a response video that I, re I received from a user uh, regarding my chaotic behavior with MATLAB video. The uh, version was asking me just to explain some of my code that I had written up here. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have the actual code anymore, but what I did here was I just literally went like a uh, screen captured from my video and then I just shoved this thing in paint. So hopefully we can go through this step by step. So again, I'll send. A, I'll put a link to that original video because that's original. That is admittedly one of my oldest videos on this channel. But so I'll put a link there for you guys if you want to know what the heck I'm talking about. But anyway, uh, setting up this particular. Uh, yeah, here we go. Setting this particular thing up. Uh, first, I just set the variable n equal to one uh, when we were typing in our equation to MATLAB. We're basically saying one gets stored into the value of or the variable n. I put a semicolon after the line to suppress this particular line. That just means that it runs it without displaying back on the main console, oh, n is equal to 1 or answer equals 1. Basically, I'm just saying let n be 1, but don't bother showing me anything about it. My next step was to generate a random number. I just told it to pick a 1 by 1 because you can theoretically make a matrix of random numbers. So I just told it to make a 1 by 1, one random number, and store that value into x. I then, just to keep this particular value of x separate, I sort it into a different variable called xg. That's just what I called it, it doesn't really mean anything. So of course what our particular uh, update rule is going to be in this kind of situation is, uh, what we already mentioned, is that it's going to be some coefficient n, which up here I define it as just 1, or 2, or 3, or 4, or a, like in the video. Uh, we have so we basically take our coefficient n, multiply that by x, multiply that by one minus x, and then that number is getting shoved into our variable x two. What this line in particular in here is just saying is that if the value of x two happens to be greater than one, that would only happen in the cases where our coefficient n were greater than or equal to four. And again, pardon my, or sorry, greater than four, not greater than or equal to. Where's the eraser? Here we go. So in the case that n is greater than 4, then this is when that particular case might happen. Basically, like I mentioned in the video with the mod modulus case, was I was just saying take the remainder when x so when your particular variable x2 is divided by 1. So in other words, I'm just keeping or I'm getting rid of everything before the decimal point and just only uh, keeping track of what's happening afterward. This is basically the same as taking the remainder and only caring about the remainder of our particular variable x2. But again, this only was valid for the cases of like n greater than 4 where you started to seem like the double parabola type situation. But otherwise, it doesn't matter. Likewise, I here just stored my new variable x2 which we executed from our uh, update function and I just stored this into a new variable called x2g. So that's basically just how we're going to be iterating this function. So we have our original variable x and we have our variable x2. So what I then constructed was I then constructed a while loop. Let me see if I can, yeah. All right, let's fix this back in. There we go, that should be better. So I then constructed a loop. Uh, you can construct for loops, you can construct for while loops. Uh, so what I just said was that while the absolute value of x2, our updated version, minus x, our original, was greater than some tolerance, this could be played around with, but you want it to be at least 10 to the minus four. Basically, all this is saying is, as long as our, as our original point and our updated point are far enough away from each other. That's going to kind of give us our idea that we either reached a converging point, you know, we either reached one converging point, or that we had to keep iterating again and again and again. If we found a fixed point, obviously the difference between these two points would be really small, we would no longer, this uh, particular loop while loop would no longer apply, and we would just end the end this loop and be done. So setting up this loop now, so the function clf, I believe that just clears the, what is that clear? That just clears the main console screen, like your, your main screen. So that way everything is out of there. Again, we have our original variable x, I just shoved that into the variable x old, because that's what's originally what we're going to have. I then shoved x2, our new variable, to be basically taking place of that old x variable. We update our uh, function by going by the regular thing again by the regular update rule, n times x times n minus, or 1 minus x. 
Again, the same situation as before, you know, if the, our value of x2 is greater than 1, then I'm just going to drop the 1 point whatever and just have it as that whatever, or point whatever being my final answer. That way we can keep iterating this loop. What I then did was I constructed a set of points. That's how you can actually see when I graph these things, the particular, all the different points that the function visited. So basically I just constructed two lists. I have one of X called xg that's basically just saying these are all of our old points and then a list called x2g where basically I'm just adding you know our new y coordinates every time it's not super critical that it's not oh yeah I think or actually CLF does sorry going up here I think this actually uh, deletes the it's either the console or the graph itself I forget which one I apologize but anyway so we uh, construct our list of our x coordinates and our y coordinates for this thing. Basically, I'm just sh I'm, we have we construct a list, and then as long as we are inside this loop, we are adding more points to this list. I then uh, tell the computer to just graph all these things. So these are all of our x coordinates. These are all of our y coordinates. Uh, the b plus in print in uh, apostrophes just basically says, uh, you know, it's an option mode. So I want blue points, and I want each particular coordinate to have a plus sign on it. You can have like a, you know, just a dot or some other shapes as well. The hold on function now does something else. Basically this is plotting the particular update rule that we just had. So we had our x old and our new variable x. So basically our original x coordinate and our updated version. And likewise those, those two become our y coordinates as well. The pause function in this loop is just uh, slowing down the graph of the of the process so that we can actually see what's going on. This point one basically just means stop the function for point one seconds so we can look at what's going on in the graph of the function. If I did not have this line, uh, the program would just run, but you would not be able to see the graph at all because it would keep updating the graph so fast you really couldn't see anything. Uh, this point one, like I mentioned, is just a time interval. If you or to erase this uh, time interval and just have parentheses, what then what the program then does is it requires you to click in order to advance every iteration. So I prefer it easier to just use a point one uh, time step so that you can kind of get an idea of what's going on. And basically we just repeat this process until we are done. Of course I'm going to delete everything here, aren't I? Yeah, that's too bad. Oh well. But basically that's just a quick introduction of like what my particular uh, file is doing while we investigate how uh, we how to observe this chaotic behavior. So basically, I have I uh, have my update rules. I have the occasions where if you know your x2 is bigger than one, but as long as your n is less than or equal to four, then you don't have to worry about it. If you're only care concerned with x being like or with n being like two, two and a half, three, three and a half, four, then you're perfectly fine. All right, so I hope that helps explain things. This is Big Max saying later.